I compared my iPhone 13 Pro with my professional photography camera. Let's see how it stacked up. Work hard, rest often. What is going on everyone? My name is Finn Badgley and yes, I pitted the iPhone 13 Pro against a professional photography camera. The camera that I use not only to film these videos, but for the majority of all of my photo shoots. And the results, well, you'll just have to watch to find out. Over the past little bit that I've had this phone, I've wanted to test it in a bunch of different scenarios, pitting it against my professional photography camera to see how the two compared. This includes taking some landscape photos down at the beach, holding it side by side right between my Canon EOS R, using this in natural light, broad daylight, low light, everything to see how it stacked up. And here's the thing, I was actually very surprised. Now, here's the thing, for some of these photos, to the untrained eye, you might not know the difference. For example, these two landscape photos here, they are very, very close. One looks a little bit sharper than the other. The other has a little bit more of a look to it, but they're both so similar. One thing I did find about the iPhone overall, and it's pretty much the same with any cell phone ever, is they have that kind of artificial, digitally sharpened look. And for some of these photos, I took down some of the sharpness or some of the texture when I was editing them to make it look a little more like the cameras that I'm used to, where it isn't so aggressively sharp, because that is usually the mark of when you can tell that it's taken on a phone. It just looks a little too sharp, like if you crank the slider a little bit too much. And what ends up happening is, sure, those images might be sharper, but the images from a professional camera have more detail. Now, I took a bunch of photos on different shoots that I've had recently to try and compare them. And usually for these different shoots, I'll be using a lot of big flashes and stuff like that going off. But to compare these, I wanted to keep it pretty simple. So we just used a big LED light that I use right over here to light these videos to add a little bit of light to my subject. And I literally held the phone right beside my camera with a similar focal length to compare the two. Now, the three lenses on these are like a 0.5, a one times and a three times lens. Now, these are the equivalent of a 13 millimeter, 26 millimeter and 77 millimeter. So I threw on my 24 to 105 and then I also had a 17 to 40. I didn't quite have a 13 millimeter lens. So the most accurate comparison I could make is roughly a 17 millimeter. So you could see that super wide look. Now the 13 is a little bit wider and kind of has a little bit more that you're seeing in the frame but it's the closest comparison that we're gonna get there. So a lot of these, I was holding those two cameras right beside each other, taking photos at pretty much the same time. And I was very surprised actually. For some of them, I could tell which was taken on which, even though the look of the iPhone did surprise me. Now, a lot of these, when I went into Lightroom, I edited them to look very close together. And I think that definitely helped it, like taking down some of that sharpness and kind of making them close to the same look. For example, a lot of the photos on my EOS R, a lot of them were a little glowier because that's how I wanted it to look in the first place. So I added some radial filters and different stuff like that in the edit to make it look similar, but it actually did. It actually got really friggin' close. In fact, I have this photo here, which is taken on the phone. And then this is the version taken on my EOS R. And unless I zoom in really, really close, I almost can't tell the difference. Me. In fact, when I was editing through some of these, I imported them into Lightroom on my computer. And as I'm sitting there, I actually momentarily got confused which was which. And unless I zoomed in and like paid more attention, I, like I mistook them. Me, I'm a professional photographer. And for a brief moment, I mistook which camera took what photo. And if that doesn't say it all, right there. I honestly never thought I would get to this place with a phone because 
there are definitely situations where you could clearly tell the difference, but for this particular moment, it slipped past me. And that, that blew my mind. I, I, <laughs> oh. Now, you're not completely off the hook because I also tested this in different low light situations. And cameras always perform best when they're in natural light, specifically natural overcast or shaded soft light. But when you get them into different scenarios, that is when you begin to see their weaknesses. Now, in broad daylight, the iPhone works really well because of the built-in HDR features and computational photography that it has. But then we get into low light situations. And don't get me wrong, this is the best I've seen a phone perform in low light, but it just doesn't quite stack up yet. What I mean by this is I was taking a bunch of different photos. There are some that I took from a recent shoot I did where we had a ski hill in the background. We got a lot of those lights on and I had a couple different lights on my model here, shooting some sunglasses and that kind of thing, getting this really moody vibe. And we had these lights super close to her. So it was really soft. And even then it just didn't quite hold up as well. Now, I wasn't using portrait mode or anything like this, so the background blur wasn't as much as you might have gotten otherwise, but you can tell the difference between the two. And I wasn't even at f like 1.2 or 1.4 or something for these photos that you see taken with the USR. This was at like f4, 5, 6 or something like that. Now, yes, I was telephoto, so you get a lot more out of focus, but it just, everything, it just has a more flattering look than you got with the phone. But even with that said, the photos from my phone with this are actually solid. And I was even impressed with those. Like this is the best low light photos I've seen taken from a phone ever. Now, yes, I did have a bunch of lights going on and stuff like that. And then as well, there are these particular photos where some of them were taken in more natural light with a more backlit scenario, different things there, and it held up pretty well there. Again, you're getting a bit of that digital sharpness, but it held up really well. And then we went over to some of the low light photos and it still performed great, but it just didn't perform quite as well. Especially if you zoom in, you start to see the image fall apart a little bit. Now, this is something they're getting better at all the time, but it, I don't think it's quite there yet. Now, if you were just taking some photos of your friends and different stuff and you just wanted to post some great photos on IG or something like that, this is perfect for that. These would work so well. But from a professional photographer's point of view, the low light photos aren't quite there yet. Now I know a lot of this is based in computational photography and stuff like that. And a lot of it is based on AI which they're improving all the time with mere software updates. It's something where you can take the quality of a camera from a solid six to an eight or a nine, just with a software update. They're, these are getting better every time. And with each generation, they're putting out more intense features. And it's actually really impressive. Now I did mention my larger flashes earlier, which I didn't use. You can actually now use strobes use photography flashes with your iphone based on different connective apps and different things stuff like pro photo offers stuff like that that is super cool i haven't got my hands on that yet so i haven't had the chance to play around with it but it's definitely something that i'm curious about doing especially after seeing the quality that you can get with the photos out of this obviously for a lot of my work and everything I shoot as a professional photographer, it makes sense for me to use the cameras that I use. But if I were to shoot anything on a phone in this day and age, I think this would be my first choice. You don't need any fancy apps even to get a lot of quality out of it. And yes, in certain circumstances, it isn't quite there yet. But 
It's close. And for a moment, it even fooled me. And honestly, from a phone, I'm impressed. Now, does this scare me as a professional photographer? No, honestly, it doesn't. Because the thing that makes a professional photographer is the eye. It doesn't matter if you're shooting with a phone or the top of the line flagship camera. A professional photographer will know how to get a great image every single time. I'd rather be in the hands of a seasoned pro with an iPhone any day over an amateur who has never picked up a camera before with the biggest camera setup. It, you're just gonna end up with better photos. And this is slowly closing that gap. So there are no excuses anymore. I mean, not that there were to begin with, but if you wanna get started in photography and you don't have expensive cameras and different stuff like that, get started with this. It's all you need. And if you wanna take it somewhere, sure, upgrade to these more intense cameras, but holy crap, this impressed me. And maybe it impressed you too. Let me know your thoughts down below. Drop a like if you like this kind of thing and subscribe if you haven't already. Work hard, rest often, and as always, I will see you on the next one.